Thanks for watching, Airy TV viewers. Welcome to our news broadcast. Here are the headlines. Members of Ministry of Information graduate following training. Activity assessment meeting of a new and unsupervision. U.S. eyes long-range rockets for Ukraine as armed supplies dwindle. And Venezuela takes first step out of political stalemate. In our domestic news, certificate award ceremony was held today, 28 November, at the premises of the Ministry of Information for 130 staff members that were provided training in cooperation of the Ministry of Information and the UNDP on various modules of journalism. Mr. Yamanda Gabramaskal, Minister of Information, said during the event that developing capacity of staff members is the priority of the Ministry of Information and further commended the contribution of partners and congratulated the organizers of the training and the graduating staff members. Mr. James Wakiaga, UNDP resident coordinator, called on trainees to take responsibility in verifying the information they received and disseminate the history and development of their country and their perspective. Mr. James Wakiaga also expressed appreciation for the government of Eritrea in general and the Ministry of Information in particular for the effort they exerted to ensure the sustainable development goals. Mr. Aeneas Chuma, UN resident coordinator on his part, underlined the role of media in enhancing a country's nation's priority and achievements of sustainable development goals. According to the Human Resource Development Office of the Ministry of Information, 186 staff members of the ministry, including 75 girls, took part at the training organized in cooperation of the Ministry of Information and the UNDP for the last two years. The National Union of Eritrean Women Branch in Ansabar Region conducted activity assessment meeting of 2022 and of plan of action of 2023. At the meeting organized on 23rd and 24th November, Ms. Amna Hassan, head of the union branch in the region, said that the organizing girls' youth, improving socio-economic capacity of women, material and financial support to disadvantaged women, as well as capacity-building training programs, have been among the main programs of the union branch. Other reports presented, the heads of the union in the subzone indicated that the training programs that have been organized included weaving, tailoring, basic computer, basic computer application, administration and finance, as well as bee farming that have registered encouraging results in the improvement of livelihoods of the beneficiary women. The participants conducted extensive discussion on the reports presented and adopted various recommendations including for the sustainability of the awareness raising activities, organizing sustainable vocational trainings at subzonal level as well as in developing economic capacity of women. The Cultural Week at the Warsaw Ikalo High School in Sawa under the theme Conscious Youth Foundation of National Security from 25 to 27 November concluded with cultural, educational and artistic competitions. Indicating that the program that continued for two months included general knowledge competition, debating, drama, traditional and modern dance, poems, short stories, narrations as well as fashion shows. Mr. Abrahayu Asafau, head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students in Sawa, said that the programs have significantly contributed for students to identify their talents. Mr. Abrahayu went on to say that the main objective of the program was to enable the youth to preserve their culture as well as transfer the noble societal values through entertaining programs and develop unity among each other. At the 10th type of uh, Competitions about 300 students participated. Mr. Abrahayu added that speaking at the occasion, Colonel Debesai Gide, commander of the National Service Training Center, said that the cultural and artistic competitions organized attest to the noble societal values as well as the history of the Eritrean people that they have been rightfully transferred to the young generation.
Those are the mystic news. Please stay tuned for the international news right after a short break. The Pentagon is considering a proposal to supply Ukraine with cheap, small precision bombs, rather, fitted onto abundantly available rockets, allowing Kiev to strike far behind Russian lines as the West struggles to meet the demand for more weapons. U.S. and Allied military inventories are shrinking and Ukraine faces an increasing need for more sophisticated arms as the war drags on. Boeing's proposed system, dubbed ground-launched small-diameter bomb, is one of about a half-dozen plans for getting new munitions into production for Ukraine and the U.S.'s Eastern European allies, industry sources said. The weapon could be delivered as early as spring of 2023. It combines the GBU-39 small-diameter bomb SDB with the M26 rocket motor, both of which are common in U.S. inventories. The war in Ukraine drove up demand for American-made weapons and ammunition, while U.S. allies in Eastern Europe are putting a lot of orders in for a range of arms as they continue to supply Ukraine. Venezuela's government and the opposition have signed a preliminary agreement to find a way out of the country's political crisis. During talks in Mexico, the two issued a joint statement requesting that billions of dollars frozen abroad the release to help and help fund social projects. It comes after years of failed attempts to solve a political deadlock. In response, the U.S. said it would allow the American oil company Chevron to resume some activity in Venezuela. The government and the opposition, with the help of Norway as mediator, had drawn up an agreement that aims to ensure that billions of dollars frozen abroad will be gradually released by a UN manned fund to be put towards health care, education and food aid. The funds were blocked by foreign banks over the alleged irregularities in the 2018 elections. The progress made on Saturday had been welcomed by the U.S., who described it as a step in the right direction. It also said oil company Chevron would be able to resume some activity in Venezuela, including importing Venezuelan crude oil in the U.S. Venezuela had been caught in a downward spiral for years, with growing political discontent further fueled by skyrocketing hyperinflation, power cuts and shortages of food and medicine. That was our news. Please stay tuned for a recap of tonight's headlines. Members of the Ministry of Information graduate following training. Activity assessment meeting of the National Union of Editorial Women in Unsupervision. U.S. eyes long-range rockets for Ukraine as arms supplies dwindle. And Venezuela takes first step out of political stalemate. And that was our news. It is good night from us.